we're here to talk to you about the Almighty and Source of all life. Now, what do you call him? What were you taught to call him? What do you believe you should call him? And are you indifferent to that right now? Are you kind of like, well, I, God might not technically be the proper term, but that's okay. He knows right. So do I. So do some etymologists here in the world who know that God means Odin, for instance. And, uh, and uh, it's, 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 it's proto-Indo-European. Indo Freedom expression. So long. And then you also even homicide. So long, so they all. Right? Side note. How real is your relationship with him? Do you pray to him like you're writing a letter? Dear God, please give me that bicycle for Christmas. Even though it's not really a birthday. Why do we talk to him like we're writing a letter? Why do we call him what we call him? Why do we, like, how do you know? Like, what if your name, what if you like calling yourself Robert? And maybe you're one of those people that finds it annoying that someone doesn't say your, what you think be your full name, like Bob, and you don't like it. Maybe you don't mind. Maybe you're like him. Source means Yahweh. And Yahweh says only the and you like being called that, not Jesus, for instance, or God, or, or uh, whereas like with God, that's Proto-Indo-European and Proto-Germanic. And how that got in there was, so in time, basically, some folks got a hold of original scriptures and they started butchering it and started writing in things that shouldn't be there, uh, thinking that they were doing good, uh, like, and then like all young. They, they thought, well, I'm going to replace it with God because that's translating it into German or, or English or whatever else. But yet the word, quote, unquote, God is not at all etymologically related to Oyom. And then people argue with that, too. And they say, well, it's Elohim because, you know, he is plural. No, he's not. So, um, Plural? Really? So why does he say over and over again, he's one, not Three, not two. Right, that's two guys. One. Okay. So he calls himself the great I am, not the great we are. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. He says over and over again, you know, he is salvation. Like, 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 like. I'm not going to say like it's because my sound on, but like, quote unquote, him saying, not me. I am salvation. You know. Now, what does that mean? Yahweh is salvation. Yahweh say. Right, so you uh, look it up in uh, uh, the uh, in Strong's uh, Concordance uh, and also the BDB lexicon. Uh, you can see that Joshua, the son of Nun, the still says Yeshua or something, or Yahweh, Yahshua or something. But the essence of the etymology is there. Like it's like Yahweh is salvation, Yahweh is salvation, not Jesus. You know, like Jesus just can't be, like look it up in the old Syriac and Aramaic and Arabic and uh, also in uh, old Latin, Vitus Latina, you know, mm -hmm. and in the also uh, Hebrew uh, and Koine Greek, all the various languages, Coptic too. And there's not one word in all those languages that even sounds anything like Jesus or Jesus. And Jesus, they say in Koine Greek, is a transliteration. But it fails to meet the standards there because it doesn't like you compare Jesus and Yahweh say or Yehoshua, they don't even sound like they like, mm. so, <laughs> so uh, you've got all right. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got God and you've got this German stuff going like Proto Indo European, Proto Germanic, and they put in God. Totally off, right? Um, now, it was just like wilderness, and it's rooted in uh, uh, that that language. And so now you got a problem, because now you got people like now to this day, that's all we know. Created person, well, not me anymore, but like a 
lot of you. If you're watching this, you probably don't know. You know, and you come to know. You know, and if you didn't know, you will know. If you're willing to know, you know, you know. So, where where do I get this from? So I'll look that up. I've got it written out. My dad and I. When I say my dad, I I consider my dad the creator of all things. Yeah, I say I was young. God. And uh, it was only begotten son, Yahweh say. So it's the same name as the contraction of that name, Yahweh say. Yahweh say. So, yes. And uh, so we got it written up here in what we call Yahweh and Zion's Travails, a scripture book we've been working on. And if you go look up on. Uh, Wikipedia uh, at the word God, but it has to be like typed in God and then in parentheses word, because if, if you don't, then you'll go to something else like English. Um, when you look it up, it'll tell you what we're saying, which supports what we're saying. And same thing with Wikipedia and Odin, O D I N. And so you had a bunch of folks that were that were joining the quote unquote church. Sorry, I don't need to talk about it. So at the time, and it was already very much like lost. So you already had uh, the Latins, uh, the Vita Satina, uh, Latins, uh, Romans coming in there in German, uh, German, Germanica, Germanations, German territory, German territory, Europe, ter Europe, sorry, uh, deeper into Europe, and they already were saying Theos, which is related to Deus, which is related. Zeus, you know, and Zeus. I certainly don't remember him being called Zeus, 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 Zeus. You know. So now, how do we know that? Well, because we're testing these things out. We test all things. Right? Remember the first video? If you didn't watch it, I recommend maybe after you're done watching this one, go and check it out. Test all things with Zion and his dad. And so, uh, so now, if you look at the original word, like as much as we can, like you got to remember too, like if you're looking at the Masoretic text, uh, there's a Nikud vowel points in the Masoretic vowel points. They put these vowel points in there, like in those little dots and stuff like that. So they're not pronounced like as they should be in pure form. What's the point of putting vowel points in there if we already know how to say them? Uh, they should be said with a breath, like ya, hey, wa. Hey, not Yod, hey, Bob, hey. That would be like Yehovah or Jehovah. Um, and there's no J, there's Yah. 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 Not, you know, you know I mean, it's just self explanatory, really, to be honest. You know, drop the bell points. Uh, and just, you know, look at the etymology of God. Look at the, um, go type, like, I don't know if you got it, but uh, like on my phone here, it's right. Mm -hmm. So a simple iPhone 5, it's got to upgrade pretty soon. So it is what they call 2023. So, um, so now I'm just unlocking it. Hopefully. So now if I go to this program here, I can't really have it, I see my flat. But if I go on here, so I'm letting it load. And uh, so if you look at here, like at these uh, little lines and stuff, well, go and look at, see, it's pretty simple. Go back to Genesis, okay? And we'll go at Genesis 1, okay? <laughs> and uh, in the beginning, God created God, the heaven. What's heaven? Have you ever heard that before? So we'll look at, very clicky, we clicked on, the word God with my finger is like touch, and then there's H430, so that's the Strong's Concordance. Mm -hmm. So the H stands for Hebrew. If it says G, it's Greek. Mm -hmm. So if you scroll down here, it says it shows the original words. Now so one is with out the vowel points, and one is with. Sorry, it was kind of blurry a little bit. Right about there. So you'll see that one has vowel points, and then the other one. Does not. So and then they say it means Elohim. And then you look at that, 
And even they got it kind of wrong. Plural. Rulers, judges, divine ones, angels, excuse me, gods. But they don't even know that the word God means. It's really easy to do. It's like the animosity. You saw the bottom of the screen there. Um, you may say go back, you know, pause and write it down or open up your window, another window. The next is YouTube thing and kind of check it out. Uh, Godlike ones. Works are special possessions of God. The true God. The true Odin. Like if you say it literally, it sounds funny, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they don't even know what it means. But it says plural of, this is their guess, oh, 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 oh. gods, like more than one, in the ordinary sense, but specifically used. In the plural, thus especially with the article of the supreme God. I thought there was only one. L. Why would, why would uh, he? Why would it be necessary or logical for there being more than one mighty one? Doesn't make sense, does it? So, why would there be more than one? And why would he? Why would it be a logical design for him to have more than one person in the oneness of it? Like people call it the Trinity and. The Duality. Some people think it's like a dual, maybe, or a triad, or whatever. It's really your Father, Son, Holy Ghost, like this. But yet, there's not one single part in all of the Bible that says He's three in one. So, and then same thing with the. Uh, oh, so it's the same thing with. So if I look up the word, so if I go here and I type, see the little glass, the search box there. So now. This little handy is called Kairos, a little Bible app. So if I type into there, Trinity, Trinity, and I go search, and zero matches. But if I type on that, if I type up uh, Trinity online, now you're talking Egyptology. Now you're talking Tammuz, Astarte, ancient Chaldea, where my dad I pulled out one of his baby boys, Abraham, Abraham, uh, took him out of Chaldea. And now you're talking Ezekiel 8. Now you're talking, about, so it talks about the symbol of his jealousy. Uh, it says, Ezekiel 8, uh, the first, you can look it up if you want. And uh, it says, it basically, the communication, it grieves him really deeply. And there's a symbol there, and you're like, what is this? And the symbol of jealousy related to Tammuz. And when you go up at Encyclopedia Britannica, it shows him carrying, like I said in the last video, thing, right? a cross. And he's a dying and raising entity, right? Uh, if you say deity, you'll find out that the word deity is actually related to the the term Zeus as well, which is Baal. In other words, for Baal. So um, look that up if you want. So the point is that so now I'm going to type into my search box. And I'm going to put up in, in Google, T-R-I-N-I-T-Y, Trinity. And you've got all this unsubstantiated, uncredified claims that Trinity defines God as being one God existing in three co-equal, co-eternal, co-substantial persons in Wikipedia. Really? So where is that in all of the Bible? All of the Bible. I challenge you to debate. And in a polite kind way, bring it. Mm -hmm. Love you. So it says many times he is one. Now, when you look at First John five verses seven through eight, well, this is where they're getting a lot. Mm -hmm. But what's funny is I'll be right back. <laughs> now I've got this old Bible, holy Bible. It says like wow, it's pretty well used. It seems. Uh, I still use it. We do. Now, if you look at the back of this old thing, and we look at Q R S T H I J K L M P Trinity Holy Three in One Persons. Can I see it? Mm -hmm. uh, perfect unity, the Godhead or divine essence. While the term does not appear in the Bible, the doctrine is abundantly suggested. Really? Okay. 
So now you've got Genesis 1, verse 26. So Genesis 1, verse 26, where it is suggested. Suggested. Why? So I'm in Genesis. Oh, coincidentally, we're in Genesis chapter 1. And El Yom said, let there be light. By the way, light reference is true. Is light going on for you now? I hope so. Love you. So now, Genesis 1, verse 26, you've got, and O Yom said, let us, us? Really? Yeah, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Dominion? Are we dominators? Over the fish and the sea, of the sea, the, the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping that creeps upon the earth. Now, did it really say, let us make man in our image? Mm -hmm. No. Prove it. It also says in your Ezekiel 8 that in the Mesoretic scrolls, it calls him Adonia, which is etymologically related to. Adonis, Adonai, you know, the Greek god, the Greek Odin, the Greek false El, who uh, has a lot of sexual relations with others and does a lot of really bad and appropriate things. And it says, here's another thing, how about this? So it's suggested in, in, in Genesis 1.26. Now, I should jump back there. First John, here we go. Here's the one that will cut the chase. So 1 John 5, 6 and 7. This tends to be the strongest one that people go by. So now 1 John 5, verses 6. This is, this is he that came by water and blood. I'm going to say the property. Even Yahweh's name, Messiah. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit, the pneuma, that's a person, Numa suke. It's not spirit, soul, and body. It's just. Anyways, that bears witness because the spirit is truth. So he says earlier, quote unquote, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can go to his dad except through him. Right? There's not a third part or second part. The three, oh, sorry. This is he that came by water and blood. Is water a person? No. Is blood a person? Yahweh say Messiah, not by water only, but by water and blood. So little baby's born, you know, the womb, there's some water. Water breaks, there's some blood. All those people, you know, uh, born again, there's water. That bears witness? Mm -hmm. That's not a person, is it? Mm -hmm. uh, and then Yahweh say, the only begotten son of Yahweh say, O Yom, he's one person, not second or third. He died and rose from the dead. So I bear, so he bear witnesses of me, the person, but then certain things to bear witness are the water that I was baptized into and his blood that he shed for me. Mm -hmm. So how is that three and one? Next verse. For there are three that bear record in the Samyam, which is quote unquote heaven here, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So the Father, the Word. So is his Word a person? His word became flesh. His word always was his body, always was flesh. You remember when he formed up and he wrestled Jacob and he named and he didn't rename him. He revealed to him another aspect of his name, Yisrael. He was already in the flesh. But then his word became built man flesh, fresh seed. And like it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by his word. So all that my sister Miriam had to do was believe. And he didn't go into her. Gabriel, my brother, didn't have to lay with her. All they do is carry the word, just like you're hearing the word now. And she just had to believe. And then right within her egg, on the egg, at that site, his word became a building block. Hmm. They're known as spermatosa. Hmm. You didn't have to lay with her have any relation. And and that's the first generation created person, just like Adam was first generation, meaning not from the womb. Or not from like a man's seed, you know. So uh, I created man. So now you got the second generation aspect because she came from a womb, her, and the egg 
he was he united with the egg and he was born from the womb. So you got 50% of that blood and DNA was first generation, fresh material. And the other half was second generation. So that's someone from the womb. And then when he died and rose from the dead, that's regeneration, third generation. So now you've got, that's not three persons either. That's both like one set apart generation, one priesthood, one nation. So you've got, for there are three that bear record in the Samya, or in creation. It says heaven here, but think about it. Uh, the, the dad, the, so the word, so his temple, his word. It's pretty simple, right? When he died and rose from the dead, there were some pretty evident scars on that word that became flesh, that he died and rose from the dead. Wouldn't you say that for a witness? That's the type, type of evidence? Mm -hmm. And also many other evidences. Mm -hmm. So, and the Rach, the Rach Kadash, this was a Kadarat or Rach, the, the set apart person. Him, his person. So, there are three that bear record in the Samyam or in creation the Father, the Word, uh, and, well, I don't like this, but I quote, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. So, and these three are one. Does it say these three persons are one, or these three are in one, or it's a trinity? Okay. There are three that bear witness in the Eretz. That's the Hebrew term for like the, this world, Earth, uh, or cosmos in Greek. And here it says, oh, sorry, my bad. Here it says, okay. So sometimes it says cosmos. Uh, arable land, the ground, the earth as a standing place, the mainland as opposed to the sea or water. So the gay. The, su the spirit, so it's pneuma, if you look it up, so clicking on that on the word again, click on it, and then it comes up, you see the Greek 4151. So it says here, pneuma, right? Now, pneuma, it says here, the third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit. Go evil. Go eternal with the Father and the Son. I'm not disrespecting you as a person. Do you like false teachings or false beliefs? I don't. But I love you. Big difference. Love you. So, that's me. Sometimes referred to in a way which emphasizes his personality and character of the spirit. Sometimes referred to in a way which emphasizes his work and power, the spirit of the spirit of one seed, the first century. Never referred to as the personal life. So why would he? Why would the first century group go? Did it ever leave? It's always been there. It's just that created persons on this world aren't as present now, like in terms of adults getting together in the like the community that was that we had established at that time. So he's always been here. He's never left. He doesn't forsake us as created persons. We can forsake him. Right? So. The spirit, the vital, so this one, this one makes more sense to me. The vital principle by which the anim, the body is animated, the rational spirit, the power by which the human being, look up the word human being, human, is hominidae related to evolution. So that etymological term is also incorrect. As evolution that cannot be proven to be or is substantiated with any credible evidence in support of the existence of reality, therefore I will abstain from using the word human. But this is supposed to be strong. So there's only so far you can go with the Thayer lexicon, this is in the strongest concordance, right? And look at they say they know etymology, you know. So there's not disrespect. We're not we're not we're not disrespecting people. We're looking at we're disrespecting false teachings. Mm -hmm. Do you respect false teachings? I don't. Do you not? You know, yeah, which I just over. <laughs> so <laughs> now. And then here's the part that says, but here's the part where they get it. The soul. But also there's another application for pneuma in English called pneumatic. Like there's an air compressor. Uh, there's a carpenter and such. We use tools called pneumatic tools, air tools, you know, or air nade or things like that. So it has to do with the air as well. Now, when he breathed into Adam, when he created Adam, what did he do? Was he, did he like go mouth to mouth externally? <laughs> did you? Maybe not. So he's going inside. Same with this. 
without his word, not anything was made that was made. So his building blocks right, were of the clay and the dirt. And uh, the branches called the nervous system. He seated in those branches with creative person as well. All they did was look. And out of his thoughts came the creative person that was meant for that body. Um, so now, so other than that, the point is, is also there's a movement of air here. A gentle blast of the wind hits the wind itself, spreads its mouth, sits in the mouth. Current of air, the thing of falling air, the strongest definition of air. Human, though, it's a word again, human. So, it's related, there's been lots of different words, like, like apes and stuff. No, not really, but apes, evolution. So. Um, but this is what happens. It's like, my people die for lack of knowledge. So, if you didn't know this stuff, don't be too surprised. You know? So, there's the Trinity stuff, you know, in a nutshell. It's not anywhere in all the scriptures of the Trinity, but there's a dangerous thing that it is involved in Egyptology. Also in uh, Chaldean, like ancient Babylonian, Persian, like beliefs and myths. And the cross isn't even, uh, that's Storos, Storos. Sorry if I kind of, I don't mean to be all over the place, I'm just really hyper. I'm excited. Uh, all the evidence, all the things I've stated, though, we will present, uh, and it's being presented on the screen as you, as you uh, see it for yourself. I mean, it's like this murder. Yeah. <laughs> so, you look up this word Lord as well, and history will even show that, like, you know, that, and people admit openly that the tetragrammaton people call it, the tetra being four, grammaton four letters, you know, uh, of the one word, Yahuwah, or they say, some people say, Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey, uh, that's affected by the two vowel points, though, the Masoretic stuff, they're adding their really trash things, and butcher things a lot. Uh, they might, and then they're saying, like, well, we're trying to preserve, you know, uh, Jewish in a way of saying his name, we won't be able to say it wrong. So you put in the vowel points for Adonia, Lord, and it means Baal. You know, <laughs> and um, so, you know, and why wreck something? Like you think, like like, and I hear people talk funny too. They say things like, "Well, English is a word, not a language." Really? If I could write half as many letters to describe the same thing that you're writing twice as many letters, what's more advanced, English or English? Right? <laughs> you know. Uh, if there's less effort in writing Hebrew, there is, then there is writing English, or Hebrew, then there is writing English. It's just two things. So then, what language is more advanced? Especially if I'm not writing A E I O U, because I'm not Hawaiian, right? What language is more advanced? Hebrew? So why is it that we modern people nowadays, not me, but, you know, a lot of people on this earth think because they got fast cars and they pump all of uh, dead flesh, by the way, fossil fuel, fossil fuel, that's dead flesh, fossil fuel, right? They think that's more advanced than driving a wagon with, with pulled by a horse. Well, the horse is alive, for instance, and the gasoline is dead. In that instance, the horse would be dead. So what's more advanced? Going really, really fast and dying because you wrapped yourself around a pole or got hit by another vehicle moving at uh, high speed as well. Or getting somewhere safe and on time. I think that, uh, like I said, take your thoughts captive to obey the science. And I think that if you don't, so what's the implication? If you don't take those thoughts captive, they'll take you captive, right? So now if you look at other things too, like, like so, so over 7,000 times, sorry, the term Yahweh. Or Yahweh, Yahweh, the tetragrammaton was replaced by the term Lord. Now sometimes they put the word uh, Lord in capital L R D, so it's the letter. And you got these are the generations of the psalm. So Genesis two four, so on the same Kairos Bible app. 
So I typed it in and so it'll show. It's kind of it's pretty cool. I really like this. It really is really handy. And it shows it highlighted like the word that I typed in. And uh, so my dad showed me this. It's really cool, really handy. So now I can go, oh, okay, so my just touch screen the word Lord and that pops up. And then watch. <gasps> there is a tetragrammaton. We 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 right? So ya now there is the vowel points, these ugly nasty vowel points we were talking about. Hold on, let's see if I can put it up more. I love you, Dad. Mm -hmm. So there you got so there's the vowel points. See them? That's a that's a Mesorite's point. Now there's a without the vowel points. Yeah. 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 Now there's the in the, the, the the vowel points for Adelaide, so Lord, Baal, Jehovah, or some people say Jehovah, Jehovah, the existing one. Can you bring it? You know, um, the proper nicely though. I'm not talking about violence or anything bad. I'm talking about philosophy, debate. Um, no hate mail. No, please don't hate me. I love you. I'm not. When you love someone, you don't want to hurt them, do you? The proper name of the one true God. Everybody went God. So, unpronounced except with the vowel pointings. Look at that. Really? So you're telling me, what does that seem to imply? I mean, I know they probably know, you know, that Moses was so stupid and dumb that he didn't know how to say his real name. And that the original manuscripts that he wrote without vowel points that he that these ones are more uh, advanced and more modern and better than what was originally written out of your minds you know like what is this like oh uh, you know there isn't apple icon there's more advanced than scripture <coughs> what was more advanced this tablet or the two tablets <laughs> with the ten commandments you know, I mean, I'm not saying there's no use for them. Right now there is temporarily. Uh, but I mean, whatever. But here you got, so there you go, or 6,510 times, capital L-O-R-D, God, four times, Jehovah, four times, the variant. That's what they've done to my dad's name. Defiled it. Meaning. So now, if you go online and look at the word Lord, you'll find that uh, what I'm saying to be true. Um, so basically, uh, the term Adonai also means Lord and Baal. Mm -hmm. uh, please follow the following links and test these out to see what he and I think to be true. Uh, so you can look it up on Wikipedia, uh, Adonis. Here you will see that the Phoenician Greek false held non-named etymologists related to quote unquote Adonai. This is also present in the Masoretic texts, quote unquote Adonia, amongst others. Please also see uh, the macronmamory.org website. Uh, I'll list that for you here on the caption. And note verse one, where in the English part it seems to attempt to replace my dad's beautiful name Yahweh with quote unquote God, even back then. And properly translates Adonia into Lord. Now, why is Adonia in there? That, of course, being Adonis, Adonai, Baal. So, what they're saying is by inference is Adonia, Yahweh, Baal, Yahweh. They're, once again, even the Mesorites back then were devouring his name. So, uh, and they call it ancient text and they say that it's reliable. But it's, it's, it's translation is translation. It's garbage. Uh, we just we can just get the, 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 the elements of who he is, like the, the gist. Proper, you know what I mean? Uh, just enough. When you have to reteach the rest, make all good things new. The restoration of all good things. So it would seem to apply that Baal is Yahweh, and we know that is not true. Meaning what? What uh, the Mesorites did by putting Adonia uh, in the letters A, D, M, Y, A, Lord, translating it, and next to the to the term Yahweh, in what they call 
what was able to call memory, what is memory text. And uh, we know that is not true, that he's not fail. Okay? Look it up in Wiccanary as well, uh, the term Adonai. These corrupt works are all aspects of the enemy, wicked works, crime, the wall of Dothan, untempered mortar, and the middle wall of separation. Uh, we see that in Ezekiel 13, especially verse 14, Isaiah 59, verse 1, uh, and 2, Ephesians 2, verses 14 and 16. Be careful about what the Bible is really butchered, of course. So, the Mesoetic texts are very new in terms of what some call antiquity. And as you see, you can see, those texts as well as the Septuagint have leaven in them, and the Septuagint is even older. Please see uh, the, the uh, Wikipedia uh, Biblical Manuscript. Type that up and type so you can see it on your screen, uh, where you will notice this further. Also, if you study deeply, you will notice that the Dead Sea Scrolls also contain leaven. So false teachings are leaven. Uh, Mark 2.15. Look it up in what is called Matthew 16, 12, as well. That's in Matthew. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, also contain 11. False teachings are 11, and Yahweh say, the only begotten Ben, or son of Yahweh, say, he's still him and he's still born. Being asleep, he is not. Just because he had an only begotten son born doesn't mean he became true again. Uh, warned to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, the Pharisees and of Herod. So Herod represents a government, false government, you know, mm -hmm. uh, false leader. Mm -hmm. And then the Pharisees are like false teachers. So look it up in Mark 8, 15. What Messiah is referring to is false doctrine teaching that's confirmed in Matthew and Yahweh's writing in, in, in uh, 16, verse 12, what in your Bible is called in Matthew. So time for the subsequent. So now, much longer. Now more time for the set again. So if you look at the uh, next website, uh, www.llpost.net, so E-L-L-O-P-O-S.net, uh, look up the set again, so we'll put it on the screen for you. Mm -hmm. You will notice verse 1 where if you compare it to Ezekiel 8, verse 1 in the, the Masoretic script, you will see that my dad's name is also not mentioned, but in its stead, the term curio is in place, according to we already know what that means. It means uh, Lord. And I guess I'll put that up, you know. So, also notice verse 4 in the Septuagint where the writers and the scribes, Ooh. once again, dishonor Yahweh. Ooh. Just as the writers did with the Masoretic, by not writing his name, but instead, quote, curio. You'll see that on your screen there. The second half, uh, Theo, being etymologically connected with Zeus, right? Like, right? Please investigate the Wikipedia. Look up, don't believe me just because they didn't die, I guess. Look what happens when we believe creative persons just because they said it, you know what I mean? Dangerous. You know? That's all I'm going to say. But be nice, you know, like, don't, you don't go, like, killing people, or hunting them down, or putting them in prison. You know what I mean? Like, say it once or twice, and if they still don't listen, what does he say? Just walk away. Or if they're, all, or if they're at your, your dwelling, ask them to leave. Not using it, but you know, they've kind of had enough of what you're saying. They're not really hearing yourself and stuff, so you can leave the lead. Thank you. Like, be nice, right? So look it up in Wikipedia. Look up Zeus, capital Z, small e, U-S. And also, Wiktionary. Uh, look up the ancient Greek. Type up uh, Zeus. To learn more of this disgusting filth that is crept, and also note that, quote, Deus in Old Latin, Deus Latin, uh, D U S, means Zeus. Please see uh, the Wikipedia Deus. And all that, that this is also what was translated from the Koine Greek term Theo in the Vulgate, Latin Vulgate. See that this is true uh, by looking up the Vulgate in the Wikipedia and just read along this and take your time. It's pretty serious. Please note that Tammuz, as mentioned in Ezekiel 8, is Adonis, Adonai, Adonia, and his symbol is the cross. Also Amun and Ra and all these different names with the cross. And the, you know, and the, the disc of the, of the Godoma water, the greater light, is also called the sun. That's an analogical term, Sol, which is a Godoma water, greater light, the or, uh, false L, mm -hmm. Sol, the sun L. Uh, it's a Constantine. And uh, if you
you will look sons of man and uh, at the Wikipedia at the also Britannica uh, the various things you'll see and uh, what we're talking about um, we love you we we want you to know the truth uh, if you look up to in Hosea it, it, he prophesies about this and he says that and it was a, oh, hold on. And it shall be at that day, says Yahweh, that you shall call me, call him, husband. Or, 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 or yas. This is ish, but ayas. Um, meaning a man, a male, like a husband, right? Overseer, um, right? And shall call me no more what? Bagi. Now, what does Bagi mean? It says, Ba, Be, Be, Ya. Ba, Be, Be, Ya. And um, so, meaning what? So that's happening now. The prophecy is being fulfilled. Lovely. And um, for I wife, so Yahweh, he says, I will take away the names of Baalim out of her mouth, and they shall no more remember me, it's supposed to say, by those names. So you look at the word Baalim, it just says simply Baal. It's very simply, Lord. So, how would you feel if you were him? Do you like it when people call you by the wrong name? Or they go, hey, jerk, how you doing, you jerk? Hey, jerk, get out of my way, you prick. You know, like, like, like you know, I'm not swearing or cursing, but mm, like a prick, like, you know, like someone that's annoying, someone that's always croaking at you, you know, uh, you know, things like that, or, or calling you an expletive every time they talk to you. You know, like I don't want to be called honky because I'm a white guy, a white man. I actually have Indian status, but it's not the point. It's very rude, hurtful, you know what I mean? You know, or, or, you know, like I want to be called Zion. You know, and I, and I want to respect people too. I, whether if you're Muslim or Christian or whatever, love you. You know, um, I want to call you by what you want, you know, proper, proper name, you know, and and don't you think the creator of all things should be called by his proper name? Mm -hmm. You know. So why do we? Why are we? Why are people discriminating against him? Why do people say things like, "Wow, when I say Jesus, he knows what I mean." Really? Because Jesus just doesn't mean like when Gabriel, my brother, carried that word uh, to my sister Miriam. He says, "Wait, is it like it's, it's simple? It's just made clear. For he shall save his people from their crimes, from their chata, from their nation." And, uh, and 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 when you look at the etymology of um, Joshua, the son of Nun, his name, in the Septuagint, they put Jesus a long time ago. Remember the biblical manuscript thing? Remember the deal? Look up at the table there. What's the oldest? They, listen, they list the Septuagint, one of them. And then uh, Masoretic. But those are both butchered as well. They call him Kirio and Lord and all this other so the restoration of all good things in the hand, including his good name. And yeah, I did. Like us, like his children and the ones who are losing and all the ones who are saying. Love you. Uh, we want to help out. We want to reach we want you to uh, work with some more on this. Uh, we hope that you'll write us emails or maybe get us hold on Skype by uh, typing in um, my email. Uh, you can type in my email um, on Skype so it'll be uh, or you could say about my name, mm -hmm. Zion. Or say about the email, mm -hmm. Zion Z I O N dot Elia dot R at sorry Zion dot Elia so Z I O N dot E L I Y A H at protonmail dot com. 
You can also email me there. Uh, for Facebook, we use a different email. So, so and Twitter. You could follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, and uh, check us out. Um, so it'll be just type up the name Zion, Z I O N, and Ben Yahuase, B E N Y A H O O W A S A H. And add us as a friend on Facebook or follow us. Uh, hit us up, uh, please, on, on Messenger or Skype or, 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 whatever, or on email. Um, uh, we also have, uh, we're also in need of financial support. Um, and so we have a GoFundMe campaign going. Uh, you should see that all on the screen here shortly. Uh, we love you, and uh, we hope to hear back hear from you. Uh, if you want to get, if you believe truly and you think you're ready, talk to me about it. Talk to him, you know, with me, to me, to me, and we'll let you know. We'll see where you're at to get baptized, like recut. There's burial of being born, created in His image, Genesis one. Then there's the recutting. No one didn't have to be recut. We stayed faithful. So uh, to be recut is to be baryos, covenant. Recovered, like cut. Baryos is covenant. So to be recut, um, if you're interested in that, just get a hold of me and, uh, and my dad through our email and stuff. Uh, we'll be happy to guide you along the way. And um, so uh, if you have any questions or comments, please do so. Uh, and uh, let us know what's going on. We love you. And talk to you soon. Name is Yahweh Seben Yahweh Messiah. So long.